Hi class, welcome back to pharmaceutical calculations. And the lesson that we'll be doing today is dilution, concentration, and allocation. So when we are talking about dilution, concentration, and allocation, we are altering the concentration of a given um, preparation, whether it be a stock solution or a already prepared um, preparation to make that preparation either more concentrated or diluted. So these are the objectives that we'll be going through today. We, of course, want to look or be able to differentiate between a diluted and a concentrated preparation and what does that mean? What's the implications for that? What are the considerations that you need to take into account, take into effect when we are talking about altering um, product strength when we are doing pharmaceutical compounding? You are going to learn some concepts that will allow you to perform calculations to determine the ingredients that will be needed to alter a product's concentration, whether it be diluting it or concentrating it. We also want to look at a very useful calculation, I'm, I'm sorry, a very useful equation, usually called CSVS equation, and to see how best we can use that equation to determine the ingredients that we will need to alter our concentration. Um, we will also be looking at some reconstitution which also involves um, diluting a present concentration. This is often seen with antibiotics, oral and injectable antibiotics, where we are going to add a diluent to an existing concentrated preparation to make another concentration that's more dilute so that the patient will be able to get the dosage required. We are also going to be performing calculations using the mathematical um, concepts of allegation alternate and allegation medial. Of course, we'll be looking at some application problems, which involves um, prescriptions and master formulas that we are going to have to make adjustment to the concentration of the active ingredient. So this lecture is going to take place in um, many parts. And the first part that we're going to be looking at is diluting, uh, preparing a stock solution and also using a stock solution to prepare diluted preparations. The reading assignment for this lesson is from your pharmaceutical calculations textbook, the recommended text. I have here the 13th edition, chapter 15. You'll find all of these concepts nicely laid out along with loads and loads of questions to the end of the chapter along with the answers. It is hoped that I will put at least five questions so that you will be able to see whether or not you would have understood the concept. So we'll be looking at preparing products from concentrated stuff. We spoke about concentration already, and we know that concentration is the amount of the active constituents, not necessarily the active, it could be a, a, an excipient that you are trying to make a solution of a particular concentrated solution or whatever concentration it may be, maybe concentrated or not, divided by the volume. So it is amount of parts in the whole, which is usually um, a whole could be a, a liquid mixture, which could be a solution or a suspension, as well as it could be a semi-solid, which could be an ointment base, or a pessary, or a cream, or a paste, or a gel, as well as it could be a solid, which could be your divided powders. We won't be looking at divided powders for this lesson, but in um, subsequent lessons, this will be covered. 
the strength of the preparation speaks to the concentration of the mixture as we have discussed in other um, lessons. Uh, preparation um, of the strength or the preparation strength or the concentration of that particular preparation can be altered by increasing it or decreasing it. Meaning when the it we are speaking about is the constituent in question, whether it be an active ingredient or an excipient. So for example, I can prepare a 70% alcohol solution. The constituent in question here would have been alcohol and the concentration would have been 70%. I can also make a 95% alcohol, where of course the concentration is, is 95%. Concentration of a product can also be fortified. That means we're going to add more of the active constituent into the product to make it more concentrated. And we're going to be looking at instances when this is normally done. So as I said before, in the objectives, we're going to be looking at ratio and proportion, how to calculate for ingredients when we are diluting or ingredients or altering our concentrations, I should say. We can use either ratio and proportion, the CSVS equation, allegation medial and allegation alternate. We'll be looking at the ratio and proportion concept first. When you're preparing a stock preparation, you're going to be requiring two things. The pure ingredient or the, or the ingredient, whether it be an active ingredient or an excipient, which may be a liquid or a solid. And you need a vehicle or the solvent, which may be a liquid, a semi-solid or a solid. The stock solution usually is the solute that is soluble in a particular solvent, and thus the stock produced is a solution. But there are many other occasions where the stock preparation to be prepared may be a suspension where solids are dispersed in a dispersion medium, or it may be a solid where the solid may be powders, maybe tablets, and maybe capsules, where the act in that case the active pharmaceutical ingredient would have been um, dispersed in a diluent, which may be lactose or starch any of those excipients that do, does not confer a therapeutic action, but is able to carry the active constituent. That is why it's called usually a, the, the, a vehicle or a diluent. It could also be a semi-solid, as I have said before, where it could be a cream, a gel, a paste, an ointment, or a pestle. So let's look at this example so that we can get right into the concept. If one is to prepare one liter of a 15% weight in volume sodium chloride stock solution using sodium chloride powder and water, determine how many grams of the salt would be required. The first thing we have to determine is what, are, what is the meaning of some of these terms. We know one liter is the same thing as 1,000 milliliters. 15% weight in volume sodium chloride solution what that means is 15 grams of the sodium chloride will be contained in 100 mils of the solution. That means every 100 mil will have 15 grams of sodium chloride. Therefore, if we want to prepare 1,000 mils or one liter, we need to determine the amount of sodium chloride that will be needed to prepare that. We know that for every 100 mil, we need 15. So therefore, if we are going to prepare 1,000 mils, it's going to be 10 times more Therefore, the amount of sodium chloride that will be needed is 150 grams. This means that you are going to get a weigh 150 grams of sodium chloride. You are going to prepare a solution such that the final volume is 1,000 mils by adding water and your final concentration of that 1,000 mils will be 15%. So when we write our new formula, this is what we will write. We want to make a 15% weight in volume sodium chloride solution, 1,000 liters of it. We will have to weigh, or what will be required, will be 150 grams of sodium chloride. And we need all the way up to volume of 1,000 mils to ensure we end up with a concentration of 
rate environment. So let's look at a stock preparation that will be used to prepare another solution that is, that's diluted, that's more diluted, or the concentration would be less. So if one is to prepare one liter of a 0.9% waiting volume isotonic solution, determine how many milliliters of the stock solution 15% waiting volume sodium chloride solution would be needed to prepare the isotonic. So in this case, you are preparing something much more dilute from something that's much more concentrated. In this case, 15% solution, stock solution is going to be used to make a 0.9% weighting volume isotonic solution, 1,000 bits. So you need to determine now how much of that 15% stock solution am I going to need to make my one liter of a concentration of 0.9%. Again, we have to start with what we know. 15% means 15 grams of sodium chloride in every 100 mils. Now we don't know the amount of stock solution that's there. We are assuming that there's an endless supply. What we do know is that we want to make one liter of a 0.9% waiting volume. We know the final volume for that, okay? This means that 0.9 grams of sodium chloride solution. Sodium chloride is contained in every 100 mils, but we're not making 100 mils. We want to make 1,000 mils. So therefore, the amount of sodium chloride that would be in that 1,000 mils is going to be 0.9 grams times 1,000 mils divided by 100, and that is going to give us 9 grams. So this means that 9 grams of sodium chloride is needed to make a solution and to obtain a concentration of um, 0.9%. So we need 9 grams of sodium chloride in 1,000 liters, I mean 1,000 milliliters to make our concentration. But where are we going to get this nine grams? What we have in stock is a 15% waiting volume sodium store, sodium chloride stock solution. So we have to get nine grams from here. Now clearly, you can't go to the, the solution and, and get nine grams of powder. It's going to be in solution. So we have to determine what volume of that 15% waiting volume solution will contain that nine grams. So we recall that we need nine grams to make our one liter 0.9% sodium chloride solution. We're gonna get it from our 15% waiting volume stock solution, which means 15 grams of sodium chloride is contained in 100 mils. Therefore, we are going to have to determine what volume of this 15% solution will contain 9 grams. If 15 grams is contained in every 100 mils, then 9 grams will be contained in X, and X is 60 mils. So it means then that 60 mils of my 15% weight in volume stock solution is going to contain the 9 grams that I need to make 0.9% times 1,000 mils isotonic solution. So my final formula to make my 0.9% waiting volume solution using 15% waiting volume sodium chloride stock solution and water would be as follows. So I'm going to measure 60 mils of my 15% stock solution, and then I'm going to add up to volume of 1,000 mils, and at the end, I should end up with a concentration of 0.9%. Now, I want us to look at this teaser and I want you to try it. You are given the master formula below to prepare a 0.9% waiting volume isotonic solution. And you are to determine the quantities of ingredients needed to prepare 1,000 mils of the solution. And the stocks that are available are sterile water for injection and 15% waiting volume sodium chloride stock solution. Now, notice that it is a little bit different. It is telling you that you must add a sufficient amount of 15% weight in volume solution. So, I want you to pause the video and see whether or not, without looking back at the previous slides, how you can calculate 
this particular question. Let's go back to the teaser. That's the teaser. Pause the video and see how best you can do the calculation without going back to the other slides. Have you paused the video? Pause the video. Okay, now I am assuming you have paused the video and if you didn't pause the video and went straight to the other slide, you are being naughty. But anyway, I forgive you. Let's see how best we can calculate this particular question. It looks different. Sounds like what we had done before, but how it is presented is different. You are given the master formula below, so then to write 15% rating volume solution QS, water QS to a thousand units. And this, these are the stocks that are available. We need 0.9% rating volume, 1,000 mils, according to the master formula and the question. And that means that 0.9 grams of sodium chloride is needed to make every 100 mil of solution. Therefore, the amount that will be needed to make 1,000 mils is going to be 9 grams. But where will we get this nine grams of sodium chloride to make the 1,000 mils? If you guess that we are going to get it from the 15% sodium chloride stock solution, you would be correct. So we need nine grams to make our 1,000 mils of 0.9%. The stock available is 15%. That means 15 grams in every 100 mils. Therefore, the nine grams that we want is going to be in 60 minutes. Of course, this looks the same, the same thing that we have done before, but it looks different. So even though the presentation of the information is different, the concept remains the same. So we are going to take 60 mils of our 15% rating volume sodium chloride stock solution, and you are going to use that to make your 1,000 mils of a concentration of 0.9% by adding, of course, um, 940 mils of water to that to end up with your 0.9% sodium chloride solution. So I want us to just look at how our questions can be written. It can be written as this, giving you the master formula with QS, or it can be, it can tell you in words. So we need to be able to identify what is needed, what is given and how to proceed. Okay, so let's look at this. You're given the master formula below to prepare a 0.9% isotonic solution and you are to determine the quantities of ingredients needed to prepare 500 mils. Now clearly, if it's 500 mils, you're gonna slash everything in half. But let's see how um, you, will, you will proceed by using the same steps that we have done in the previous slides and see if you would have gotten the answer, all right? Okay, so, we looked at um, ratio and proportion and how to prepare stock preparation using that particular concept to determine the amount of ingredients that would be needed to prepare a more diluted preparation in solutions. Now we're going to be looking at semi-solids. So this is an example. If one is to prepare 50 grams of a 5% rating weight calamine cream using calamine powder and cream base, determine how many grams of the calamine powder and cream base should be used. Now, this is different, isn't it? Just for context, since we're not in the lab, that's what calamine powder looks like. It's a pinkish powder, and that's what aqueous cream base looks like. So let's go. 
The stocks that are available is a calamine powder, and I put 100% beside it because it means that it's the pure powder, and if it's the pure powder, it means it's coming from the source of 100%. So if it's a pure ingredient, you consider that 100%. And of course, the cream base will be the cream base. It's just a carrier or a vehicle to carry the drug. So we need 50 grams of a 5% calamine cream, which means five grams of the pure calamine powder is going to be contained in every 100 gram of calamine cream mixture. So if we are going to make 50 grams, then we will need 2.5 grams to make 2.5 grams of calamine powder to make our 50 grams. And it's very clear. If five is in 100, then how much would be in 50? It must be half. So this 2.5 grams of calamine is needed to make 5% weight in weight calamine cream. Now it's not calamine cream alone that you're going to be using to make, it's not calamine powder, excuse me, you're going to be using to make the calamine cream. You also are going to be requiring the calamine, the aqueous cream base. So we need to determine how much of that base is going to be mixed with the 2.5 grams to make your 50 grams 5% calamine cream. Total cream to be made is 50 grams. Therefore, the amount of cream base that would be needed is 50 grams minus a 2.5 to give us 47.5. So that means you're going to be combining 2.5 grams of calamine powder, 47.5 grams of cream base, to make the required concentration of 5% 5, 5 of 50 grams. So that's your new formula, calamine powder, 2.5 grams, ointment base, 47.5 grams. I had put this here for us, I'm so sorry. I put this here for us to, um, and I wanted you to see the uh, what it looks like in combining a, you would understand how to combine liquids, but uh, cream might not be so um, forthcoming. So I thought it prudent for us to look at five minutes of this video. It's pretty long, but I'm just going to be doing five minutes of it so you see what it looks like. Okay, today we're going to be making uh, a cream and we're going to be incorporating a powder into that cream. The powder we're using today is calamine and the base we're going to be using is aqueous cream. The key part to making a cream with a powder or, inco or incorporating a powder into a cream is getting the powder into a small amount of cream and then diluting it from there on. So that's what we call trituration, diluting by an equal amount once you've got the powder into the base. So as you can see, I've got my powder, my cream, and my tools all set out ready to use. The first thing I normally do is I normally clean my equipment in the slab to make sure we're not picking up any dust particles or um, bits of things that have been left over from the last cream. And also to make doubly sure that our equipment is suitable. Now as you can see, I've got three different size spatulas. When making a cream or an ointment or a paste, I recommend using the larger size spatula available. Um, this is because it has a greater surface area and is much easier to incorporate. And it's also much easier on your muscles. Okay, so the next bit is I'm gonna show you how we do this. Okay, so the way I do it is I normally get a small amount of base, spread it lightly onto the slab, and then sprinkle the powder onto that to incorporate it. The reason I do that is it stops the powder sliding off the slab if you tr then try to push powder on top of it. So you can see all the powder's gone. Now the key to this is to fold the cream over the powder. Now calamine powder is quite soft and light. and it will want to puff away. 
So as you can see, it's the cream has started to go quite pink, but at the moment it's still quite granular. Okay. You'll see on the front side of this, this is fairly well incorporated, but on the back side you've got a lot of powder and things like that. So taking another spatula, you slide the handle down, the blade down, the opposite blade, and then incorporate it. The technique here that I'm using is not a lot of pressure, but it's the side-to-side -side motion. Okay. Now when working on a slab, it gets to a point where the powder or the base is not well incorporated and they tend to be on the edges. So to make sure it's consistent and evenly spread throughout the base, I pick up the cream using the other spatula and clean the slab slightly so that we're certain all of the powder you've accurately measured is incorporated. All right, so I am not going to go any further into this demonstration, just to let you know that that is what um, is in, what is entailed in making a semi-solid preparation with incorporating a powder in a base, whether it be a cream base, an ointment base, okay? So that will give you an idea as to how we go about when we say we are going to weigh 2.5 grams of calamine and mix it with 47.5 cream base. What does that look like? Do we mix it in a bowl? Do we mix it um, in a beaker? No, we mix it on a ointment top. And it depends on the method because you have different methods of making creams and ointments. All right, so we're going to be right back with the second part of this recording. I hope that you would have understood the concept that we have covered so far. And I'll see you on the other side of the screen.